Hello fellow mutants, welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to talk about how in the Return of the Jedi film uh, they were nearly going to bring back a, a dead character so let's give this article a read because I was somewhat shocked when I read this but again shocked but not shocked if that makes sense can people be shocked and not shocked at the same time? Sad thing. Anyways, like A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back before it, Return of the Jedi script went through many drafts while nailing down the epic conclusion of the original trilogy. For one thing, the movie was originally called Revenge of the Sith, Sith before George Lucas nixed it because Jedi don't take revenge. There were plenty of other changes too. In many ways, the early drafts penned by Lucas read nothing like the movie that was released in, in theaters in 1983. So was the annotated screenplay by film historian Lauren Bossuer takes a fascinating deep dive into those rough drafts of Revenge of the Jedi with additional insights from interviews with Lucas and co-writer Lawrence Kasdan, as well as transcripts from their story meaning. In essence, the book reveals the drastically different film that could have been complete with a trip to a proto-Coruscant city called Had Aban, multiple death stores, the death of Han Solo, and a final battle with Emperor Palpatine and Darth Vader on the lava lake that almost ended with the death of Luke Skywalker, which at one point could have turned to the dark side? Wow. Okay. I feel like some of these, they, like, they re, like, refitted for, like, later on, for the later movies. Like, the whole Lava Lake battle, I feel like they refitted that for the whole, like, Anakin and Obi-Wan fight in Revenge of the Sith. The whole Coruscant City thing, I feel like they refitted it for Coruscant to be a planet in um, the prequels. Um, the multiple death stores, essentially, I feel like they took that to put in um, Rise of Skywalker, essentially. Which, Rise of Skywalker was not a very good movie, to be honest. Um, and the death of Han Solo, which I've heard Harrison Ford wanted that to happen. But it didn't land in the Return of the Jedi, thankfully. But it did in the um, Force Awakens. So, like, it's interesting to see, like, some of these, like, early, like, ideas. And, like, wonder if, like, George Lucas and Disney later on adapted some of these ideas. Tweaked it a little bit for some of the future installments in the Star Wars universe. Because... I have to admit that, like, just seeing those and, like, seeing those, like, what ifs, essentially, and, like, seeing, like, so, some of those, like, what ifs events essentially play out in the Star Wars timeline, even, like, like I said, The Rise of Skywalker was a in movie, but it was, like, still, like, w like, leaving you wonder. I wonder if Disney took that from George Lucas, like, the what ifs, like, uh, scrapped. It says the scrap script for Refrains for the Sith. Like, wow, okay. Let's be real, I wouldn't also be surprised if the Ahsoka show put off some of these what ifs. Because I've heard the Ahsoka show is going to take place, like, try to do, like, have Ahsoka going through these, like, what if scenarios. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if the Ahsoka show. Did at least one of these three um, um, ideas? Probably the whole Emperor and Freighter fight on the lava in the lava lake. Anyways, it's while going through the final battle of the revised rough draft, which you can find online. The Bosuro reveals one of the most interesting tidbits about the early versions of the movie. A surprise twist that would have seen the return of Sir Alice Goodness as Obi-Wan, but not as a Force Ghost. So 
So originally, <coughs> Lucas intended to resurrect Obi Wan by bringing him back from the Never World to help Luke in the final duel against the Sith Lords. With Yoda's ghost also showing up to protect the other heroes from the Emperor's Force Lightning. In one moment, Luke would have even jumped in front of Ben and deflected the Emperor's lightning before the villain could kill the Jedi Master once again. Like in the finished film, the fight was the fight with Palpatine and Vader would have ended with Apprentice killing Master, with Vader grabbing the Emperor and sending them both into the lava lake. Somehow, Vader redemption at the end of his life would have also led to Yoda's resurrection, meaning that Obi-Wan and Yoda would have been would have both been present for the final celebration of Ewoks but in the flesh. Okay. I mean sure the concept seems cool. But I'm happy they didn't go into Flourishing because that would have like cheapened like Maybe not so much your know, Obi Wan's depends on how, like how they would have executed it, but it would have definitely have cheapened Yoda's death, who was who died like literally earlier on in the movie, in my opinion. So I'm kind of happy that um, they didn't like bring back Obi Wan or Yoda back in the flesh, even though the whole concept seems cool, and I guess if they actually did it, then they could have. Did things, um, I, like, I bet George Lucas would have found, found a compelling way, uh, to bring both characters back without, like, making it feel like it undermined or weakens both Obi-Wan and Yoda's deaths, but, like I said, I'm happy how, like, Return of the Jedi turned out. The only criticism I have towards Return of the Jedi is that you, the green screen for the speeder by um, fight between those two stormtroopers and Luke and Leia were could have been better, but also have that little nitpick. I really don't have really much complain about the. I don't really have anything to complain about Return of the Jedi, and to from my perspective, anyways. As well as we know, the idea didn't stick around. Why not? According to Lucas, bring back Luke's mentors for the final battle. Would final battle would have not taken away. From for the final battle would have taken away from young Skywalker's own moment of character growth. Thank you, and I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm really, really happy about that, and I respect Lucas even more for that. So I'm really, really happy that George Lucas chose not to resurrect them because he didn't want to interfere with Luke's um, character growth. So that, yeah. So quote unquote. Even though at some point Yoda and Ben interfered, I eventually decided that they couldn't connect physically with what Luke was doing. I felt that one of the major issues in the third film is that Luke is finally on his own and has to fight Vader and Emperor by himself. If you had a sense, if you get a sense that Yoda or Ben is there to help him or to somehow influence him, diminishes the whole that misses the power of the scene. That, yeah. I, yeah. It would have. And I highly doubt that, like, Luke, for, like, so many years, would have been, like... I mean, he still would have been, like, looked into, like, a high light, but... I doubt the light would have been casted as brightly if they went... I highly doubt that the light would have been casted as brightly if they went that route. So I'm happy that they didn't bring go with that. Even though it's an interesting idea. I'm not going to deny that. It's an interesting idea, in my opinion. Allowing Luke to learn on Obi-Wan and Yoda during his... Oh, sorry. Allowing Luke to lean on Obi-Wan and Yoda during his duel with Vader will have certainly taken some of the magic away from the powerful moment between Father and Son in Return of the Jedi. That as well, because I also, like, didn't really think of that before, too. Like, yeah, it would have, like, made Anakin's redemption arc less, a bit less, too. And I don't think, like, 
Vader slash Anakin would have like thrown the Emperor in the lava or off the um elevator shaft the way he did if Obi Wan and Yoda were there. Because why why what point would he why why would he have a reason to? I can't really see most of a reason for Vader to do that in that scenario. To have like not so you can say Lucas, um, the reason, but like, it wouldn't be as compelling for Anakin to essentially fulfill the prophecy of the Chosen One than to see his son dying. Because I feel like seeing his son dying officially allowed Anakin, um, Anakin's life side being Anakin to reemerge to let to essentially defeat not only Darth Sidious but his dark side being Darth Vader. So yeah, I um, I'm happy about that. Anyways, Luke confronting the Emperor wouldn't have may have it been anywhere near as terrifying either. The stakes feel incredibly high in those scenes because Luke is um, is unknown against the, this great evil, but giving him Jedi backup would have robbed these moments of a lot of the tension. Instead, the scenes would have amounted to a lot of laser swords on screen with less of a normal heft. Even though Lucas and Kessin ditched these scenes in later drafts, it's clear Lucas had the document document right document right from the beginning. Father sacrifices himself to save his son and two wise old Jedi masters watch a new generation of heroes celebrate their victory. But like those early drafts, Old Ben and Yoda finally get to enjoy a well earned rest too. Yeah, and um And you can say in a way Luke essentially had a Jedi's hope when the Emperor was shooting lightning out of his hands on Luke, nearly killing him, and Anakin lifts the Emperor off away and throws him off the elevator shaft. That moment was when uh, Jedi from the Clone Wars reemerged, and it says he saved Luke's ass. So, like you can say that even in the first movie we got, Luke had Jedi hope. But like, I was just like this way first, because like, like this article says, the first one we got had more tension, more emotional impact. You, like, we didn't really know whether or not if Vader was going to step in and do what he did to save his son. Because I don't even remember, like, when I first saw Refren uh, Return of the Jedi. I was like, I mean, I knew, like, um, because I called the ending of Return of the Jedi before I watched the entire movie. It was, like, back before I was a Star Wars fan. So I knew that Heroes... Uh, survived. I knew the heroes won. Emperor and Vader died. I knew that already. But like when I saw the movie in com like in completion for the first time, I was like on the end of my seat. I like even I knew. Well, like essentially, Luke was was going to survive and Vader was going to like, and the Emperor was going to die. It's like, dude. What's he going to do? What's Vader going to do? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. And then when, like... I even call myself yelling, Save your goddamn son, Vader! Save your goddamn son! And then when he did, I said, Shit! Yes! 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 And that was like, oh my god. That was... It took me through an emotional roller coaster. So, um... I'm... D I, like, even all those concepts... Of like the early drafts of Return of the Jedi is cool to think about for sure, and um, I don't know if like Star Wars theory, being the biggest Star Wars channel, has seen this, but I would love to see his take on this article for sure. But um, yeah, this would like. I, like, I'm really, really happy that we got the draft that we did. 
because I can't like I can't see the other two like alternatives being as badass, emotional, engulfing as Return of the Jedi's ending was. So I have major respects for it. So what do you beautiful people have to say about this? Let me know in the comment section down below. Love you guys. Have a wonderful day. Be kind to one another. May the force be with us all.